Let's start Minecraft modding with Forge for Minecraft 171. Let's see how to do that. Alright, welcome to the first tutorial in the Minecraft Forge 171 series, where I basically show you how to set up Minecraft modding with Forge for Minecraft 171. And there's of course a few things that we're going to need. So there's a few download links in the description below, and we're gonna go through all of the prerequisites right now. We're gonna set up everything so that you can start Minecraft in the development environment. So like I mentioned, there's a few prerequisites. Number one, you're going to need a JDK. Like you might know, Minecraft has been built with Java. Therefore for we're going to need a JDK. I really advise you to take the Open JDK from uh, Adoptium right here. Basically just making sure that you are on Open JDK 16 and then you can go down here and then basically choose the version that you need. Now there's some differences here of course there's so there's Linux versions, there's Windows versions and then there's also a version depending on what your architecture is. So x86 would be for 30-bit version and then x64 would be for the 64-bit version of the operating system. Now I have a 64-bit operating system and the MSI is going to be the easiest. That's basically a file where you can just click and then install. So you just download that and install it like any other program. Once that is installed, you are also going to need an IDE. An IDE that is a integrated development environment. It is basically a fancy text editor for programming basically. And we're going to be using IntelliJ IDEA for this tutorial series. And the community version here is completely free and open source. So this is perfect for us. Link is of course also in the description below. Make sure to download the community version and install that completely normally like you would install any other program on your PC. Right, there's one more thing that you're going to need and that is going to be Java knowledge. This is a step that a lot of people will probably be like, I don't need that. Yes, you do. If you've never programmed before, then you will need to start at some point and with something. I can recommend the Java tutorial by Derek Banas. Incredibly good. It's a good thing. I don't have a Java tutorial of my own just yet. I am planning on something. However, it's just not quite ready yet. This one will be totally Totally fine. Otherwise, you can, of course, take a look at anything else, really. But you will need a little bit of Java knowledge. Otherwise, you're going to have a very hard time understanding what is going on. I will still try to explain everything as if you were a beginner. I'm going to try to be beginner friendly as possible. However, do keep in mind that some Java knowledge is very much required and not optional. Right. And then at the end, you will need the Minecraft Forge, of course, for the current version. We're going to be programming for Minecraft 117.1. Maybe if at some point 117.2 comes comes out, there might be some differences. I will probably have a pinned comment at that point, maybe stating the changes, or if there's no changes, then you can, of course, just proceed. If you're watching this in the future, which is very likely, then instead of just one box being here, you might have two boxes. You will choose the right box because that is usually the recommended build, and you're going to choose the MDK here. This will redirect you to a new site, and then at the top right corner, after waiting for six seconds, you can click the skip button, and then it will download a zip file. I've already moved the zip file to the folder where I want to have my project and I will simply right click and I'm going to extract it. It's going to create a new folder and it's in there. I can then delete the zip file. If you don't have the right click functionality, then you're going to need to install a program that will handle zip files. I personally use WinRAR, but you can also use something like 7-zip, for example. Now I'm going to rename this to forge-tutorial.1711, just like that. And then we're going to open the folder. As you can see, there's quite a few things in here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete all three of those files, the credits, the license, and the readme file. Those are specific to the Forge platform. However, my project is going to have a tiny bit of a different license, for example, and also different readme. This is now fine. What you're going to do then is you're going to start IntelliJ. Now, IntelliJ is probably going to look a little bit different to you than it does to me right now. However, what is going to be the same is those three buttons, the new project button, the open button and the get from VCS button. Now we're going to choose the open button. And as you can see, it already defaults to where the project is. Simply locate the folder that has all of the insights here. So don't choose the source of the Gradle folder, but chose the actual folder where those are located in. Simply select that and, and click OK. Then say trust project and then IntelliJ will open and now a few things will happen in the background. So it's going to download a few things. It's going to basically set up a few things. Now this might take, you know, just a couple of seconds or it might take up to sort of two minutes, three minutes, depending on how fast your PC is. Just let this run through. Just keep, be patient. And at the end, you will either get a build failed or a build successful. 
Either of those are fine. We're going to deal with the build failed in just a moment. It only took 20 seconds for me. Now, this is because something has already downloaded. So because I've set up this project before, this is why it only took 20 seconds. It might take two minutes for you. Be patient and wait for the build successful or the build failed. Build failed will deal with in just a moment. Then I want to mention the warning here. So you might get a warning. This project is configured with the official obfuscation mappings provided by Mojang. What does that mean? Mappings in a very broad overview are basically the names of methods, fields, and parameters. So everything has a certain name. Obfuscation basically is a process where those names are sort of scrambled up so that it's not really readable for a human. This is done so that, so that you can't just take code from someone else and just use it. Uh, that's the like very, very high level overview. And the mappings basically make it so that the code is readable. Now, in the past, there were the MCP mappings that were so provided by the MCP team. Those are, however, no longer available. For 1.17 and upwards, there will be only the official mappings as well as parchment mappings. Now, parchment is the official mappings, including some parameter names, which are going to be very useful for us. And we're going to use the parchment mappings. However, how to set that up, we're going to see in the next tutorial. And this tutorial will just set everything up so that we could basically play Minecraft in the dev environment. Long story short, this warning can basically be ignored. If you had a build failure or a build failed, then you can do a few things. So you can go to the terminal and you can put in dot backslash gradle w like that and then gen IntelliJ runs, then hit enter. Now it's going to now download a few things and take a look at a few things. This can also take, you know, 10 seconds or it might take a minute or so. And there we go. Build successful in 41 seconds. Now, if you have a build failed here as well, press the up arrow and try this again. So run this again. If it still does not work, there's a few things that you can do. Number one, you can delete this .gradle folder here and try to run it again. If that still does not work, we have a few other things that we need to set up here. And that is going to be at the moment, if we take a look back at the build folder, at least for me, I have Java 8. So currently this runs on Java 8, which is of course not quite what I want. I actually want this to run on Java 16. This should only really happen if you have multiple Java versions installed on your PC. If you followed the 116 tutorials, this is where we had JDK 8 installed. Now we need Java 16, so we need the other JDK. There's a few places where we can basically change this. So go to File and then Project Structure. And then as you can see, the Project SDK is 1.8. The Project Language Level, however, is 16. So we can basically change this to 16, hit Apply and OK. And then here under external libraries, you can see that it has a 16. So now it takes the JDK 16. There is, however, another place where we can change this, and that is under settings, build execution deployment, build tools, Gradle. Then as you can see, the Gradle JVM, here it simply takes my project SDK. So that's great. If it's not the case for you, you can always change it to the 16 here as well. And then everything should work. You can then once again, try the Gen IntelliJ runs once more. And if that still does not work, then you will most likely have a, an error here here, and you can then ask a question in the comments. I will try to help you best I can. Right, one last setting that you will need to, to take if this is your first time. If you actually expand this Java folder here, then you can see the package structure. Now, this might look different for you, and the reason might be because you don't have the flattened packages disabled. So, as you can see, if I actually enable it like it would be per default, then everything would be in one folder, so to speak. You simply turn off flattened packages as well as compact middle packages, and then everything will look exactly like it does for me. Right, and now we can jump in and start changing some files. The first thing that we want to change is in the build.gradle file. I'll simply double click to open and then you're greeted with this whole mess. So this is quite a bit. Don't worry about it. We're going to go through the important bits part by part. Right, firstly, I want to draw your attention to these three things here. So the version is the version of your mod. Now, this is not really doesn't follow any standard. However, what is really good is to basically put in the version of Minecraft first and then a dash and then put the version of your mod in. So I'm going to do 1171 and then dash 0.0.1. .0 so this would be the version of our mod and this is the version of Minecraft. Simply makes it a little bit easier for the user to see, okay, this is actually a mod for this version of Minecraft instead of this version of Minecraft. The group here refers to the package structure of your mod. So usually,
actually this is a reverse domain name. So my domain, for example, is net.tutorials by Kaupenjo. Now I would highly advise not to do this because then people might be saying, wait, that's, that's not by you. This is by tutorials by Kaupenjo. So simply put your name in here, calm in there, that's fine. Do put your name in here. And then the mod ID here is going to be the thing that is very interesting. So our mod ID is going to be tutorial mod. What is very important about the mod ID is that it has to be all lowercase and you can't have any special characters in there. So the only characters that are allowed are underscore, dash, and then numbers as well. However, that is it nothing else. So you know spaces, no no uppercase letters, nothing like that. So keep this as simple as you can. The mod ID is something that is very important for us. So we will actually have to note that so we can change this here as well. So tutorial mod and those three things are now changed correctly. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to hit control R to get the replacement menu up. And then the upper box here, we're going to put in example mod. That's basically the mod ID that sort of comes with Forge pre-programmed. And we're going to change that everywhere in this file to, of course, our mod ID, which is tutorial mod. So we're going to hit replace all. And then it has been replaced in all the places where it needs to be replaced. Right now we can go up here to this little elephant that has appeared in the top right corner and simply click it. This is going to basically load all of the changes that we have just done. Basically the, you know, changing the name, changing the group and the mod ID there. This should only really take a couple of seconds. It shouldn't be too long, especially if you haven't changed anything drastic here. And then the changing of the builds.gradle file is actually done. We can now proceed to go into our first class. So we'll open the example mod class by double clicking it and you can see that we are in here this is a normal java class and there's a few things that we are going to change here as well so we're going to right click the example mod name refactor rename and we're going to call this the tutorial mod class so tutorial mod and then enter now it's very important that you right click refactor rename because otherwise the name of the file will not change so for example if i just change this here you can see that a bunch of stuff happens that's not good and we don't want that we actually want to right click refactor rename very important next thing we're going to do is we're going to delete delete a bunch of stuff that's in here. So we're going to basically put our cursor right here. We're going to hold shift and then click here. So everything, including the IMC method is going to be deleted. We'll also just, this is more for me than anything else. I'll format the curly brackets correctly. We're going to get two errors here. You can simply delete those as well as the comment here. And then two more things that we're going to do is we're going to basically select everything here, starting with FML all the way up to get mod event bus, right click refactor introduce a variable. We're going to call this the event bus because this is something that we're going to be using in future tutorials quite a bit. So this is why it makes sense to basically introduce a variable for it. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to we want to select the example mod here, including the quotation marks, right click refactor, introduce constant, and we're going to call this the mod underscore ID. And then I'm simply going to move it. So I'm going to select it, press control X, and control V to paste it in here. And now we have our mod ID string right here. Now, of course, example mod is not our mod ID. Our mod ID is tutorial mod. Now, if you know this comment, the value here should match an entry in the meta inf slash mods dot file. Interesting. So our mod ID is currently tutorial mod and this has to match in the mods dot file. So if we open the resources folder and then the meta inf folder, we see that there's a mods dot file here. We double click and open it. You can see mod ID and I can change this to tutorial mod. So this has to match exactly what we are put in here. If this does not match, then it will say something like no match in the mods.toml file found for your mod ID, something like that. And that is, of course, not what we want. So this has to match. And then the display name, I'm just going to make it tutorial mod. That's going to be fine. So that's also very important. And then last but not least, we're going to change the package up here. So this should be the package that you have put in right here. Select this, copy it with control C and then control V to paste it in. And then I can simply say move to package. Okay. And then over here, this will have changed. So now my tutorial mod class is in the package net tutorials by Kaupenjo tutorial mod. I can then delete the empty packages right here and everything is now set up. And now we can actually see if Minecraft works. So to start Minecraft, we're going to, to the top right here to Gradle, and then we will expand tasks, forge Gradle runs, and then run client. So simply double click that and then we can minimize this as well and simply let it run through. And there we go. Minecraft has started successfully. I can also click the mods button here and take a look at the tutorial mod. So it has been loaded in. Now, of course, we don't have any functionality. Nothing is really happening for, with our mod, but our mod is in the game. So that's pretty cool. And now the development environment has been set up. So this sh would actually be it. However, I will also show you how to set up a GitHub repository. This step 
is optional, however, highly recommended because having that is number one, making it fairly easy for other people to basically see what your errors are. So you can simply say, hey, this is my GitHub repository. They can simply download it and see everything that you have done. So that's going to be really easy. This is why I highly recommend actually making a GitHub account. Link is, of course, also in the description below. And this is going to be really easy. Simply make an account there, uh, log in, make sure that you're logged in. And then in IntelliJ, you can go to VCS up here and you can say create Git repository. Now you're going to select the folder where the project is in and say OK. And now the Git repository actually has been created. But this is a local repository at the moment. So what we can do is we can go to Git and we can say GitHub and then say share project on GitHub. We can click this. The repository name is going to be fine. I'm going to make this private for the time being. Uh, if you want to share this with, for example, me, if you have an error or something like that, then make this public. Otherwise, this is not going to work. We could make a description, but we're not going to do that. And now we need to add an account. So this is something that you might have. And you can simply say login via GitHub. I will click this and then the JetBrains account management here will open. And I simply have to click authorize in GitHub. You have been successfully authorized. But what might happen for you is the GitHub window might open. And it's going to say, hey, do you really want to authorize, you know, JetBrains to use this? You simply say yes. And then everything will work. You can see now my profile has been added here. So share by Kalman Joe, that is my GitHub name. And I can simply click share. And the background is now creating the actual repository. And there you go. So add files for initial commit. The initial commit is basically the first draft, so to speak, of all of your files. So we're simply going to take a look at this. This is totally fine. And we can simply hit add and everything will now be pushed. And there you go. Successfully share project on GitHub. And if I can now, if I now switch to GitHub again, there it is. So so exactly kaupenjo slash forge dash tutorial dash 1171. So exactly where we have put it. And there it is. Now, if you make any changes here, you can basically, you know, add a comment. You can see that the tutorial mod class has now turned blue. This simply signifies there has been a change in this file. And we can go to commit so on the left here and see, oh, those are all of the files that have changed. And I can simply click the check mark and say added a comment. And now what's very important is that once I hit commit here, I've now committed this change. And now the tutorial mod class will no longer be blue. However, the change I've committed is not yet on the GitHub repository. For that, we actually need to go up here to this little push button, this arrow, and we need to click it. And then as you can see, this is the commit I've just made. And I actually have to simply click the push button here, and then it's going to push that change to the GitHub repository. So if I go back here and I reload, you can now see added a comment and I can go in here. You can see added a comment and there you go, added a comment. I can also take a look at this. There you go add a comment. So now the comment is actually in there. The change has been noted and is also uploaded on the GitHub repository. Right all throughout the tutorial series, you will of course also have my GitHub repository for this tutorial series available for you to basically, well, download, play around with, take a look at the code as well. So that is also available. Link is always in the description below. As well, I will also have individual gists. So basically individual pastes of each file that has changed in each tutorial. So while the GitHub repository is going to be separated into branches, so each tutorial will have a separate branch, the gists are always only the changes that you will need to do for this particular tutorial. If there are any files or anything like that, there's also going to be download links in the description below for each tutorial. So no worries there. And yeah, if you run into any issues or something like that, you can always leave a comment or join the Discord server that is also linked in the description below where I can offer you help best I can. Only on very few cases, I've not been able to help someone set everything up correctly. So yeah, but that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful. You learned something new and you were successful setting everything up. If there's anything else, please leave a comment down below. And I would of course also appreciate a like and I'll see you in the next tutorial. So yeah.